In this video, we're going to look at some federal tax basics. We're going to keep it as simple as we can so you get the ideas. What are we going to look at? We're going to look at gross income, adjusted, adjusted gross income, progressive tax systems, marginal tax rates, and effective tax rates. All right, so let's get started. First, we've got gross income. What is this? Well, it's basically all the money you get before you take out any deductions. As this quote from NerdWallet, thank you NerdWallet, tells us, it's the income for an individual, and it's sometimes called gross pay, gross annual pay if it's for a year, and it's your total pay before taxes and other deductions. So it's all the money you're getting in your paycheck, for example. And it gets more complicated if you have other types of income, but we're gonna say you've got a job, you got a paycheck, the money coming in, that's your gross income. What's adjust, adjusted gross income, or AGI for short, right? Just the acronym, the first letters of each word. AGI is essentially you take your gross income and you subtract out your deductions. And this is use, useful for tax purposes. The idea is that there is a standard deduction that the federal government gives you. So it's money you take off your gross income that you don't have to pay um, taxes on. But also maybe you're taking some of your money from your paycheck and you try to invest it in retirement. Or you have a health savings account, which is good to pay medical bills, for example. That money is not going to be taxed, and that's called a deduction. So AGI takes your gross income and subtracts those deductions out. And what AGI really represents is your taxable income. It's the income that the government, the federal government, is going to tax you on. So, for example, let's say you have a gross income of $100,000. It's all the money you have coming in over the course of a year. Now, right now, and this could change, the standard deduction for an individual is $12,550. So that's just saying that you don't have to pay any taxes on that $12,550. But if you subtract these two things, what's left over, that's your AD AGI or your taxable income, that's the money you're going to pay taxes on which is $87,450. So you don't pay taxes on your entire gross income. You take the deductions away, and what's left over is your AGI or taxable income. Now, we have what's called a progressive tax system, and of course it's complicated, but the, the, in the simplest way to explain that I can come up with, and this is oversimplified, but the idea is essentially that you will pay higher marginal tax rates on parts or portions of your taxable income with the more money you make. So the more you make, the more you're going to pay. So you're going to pay higher. So, um, and that's as you make more, you pay higher. I should have added that to that definition. All right, so when we look at marginal tax rates, though. This is how our progressive tax system is set up. So here's a table. It's the most current table from the IRS from 2021, but it doesn't really matter what year it is. The idea is always the same. In our progressive system, we have what are called marginal rates, these numbers over here, and those are percents that you pay on portions of your income, not the whole thing. And let me show you what I mean. Let's say you have a gross income of 100000 again, and remember our AGI, we took away the deductions. That was 87450 well, you would say that your marginal tax rate is 24%. And you can see that on the table here. If you look at the 24%, $100,000, um, I'm sorry, eight, 87450 our AGI, our adjusted gross income, that's our taxable income. It's in that range down there. All of those ranges are for taxable incomes, and 87450 is bigger than 86,375 and smaller than 164. So if I said to you, what's your marginal tax rate? You find your AGI, take away your deductions, look at the table, and tell me the percent that you're paying. Right? Your highest, it's the percent on the highest portion of your taxable income. That's what we should say. So a marginal rate is the percent, again, the, uh, that you pay on the highest portion of your taxable income. Now, that's not so useful, though, because it doesn't exactly define the taxes you're going to pay. And let me show you what I mean. I have this little spreadsheet that does calculations. And hey, let me enlarge this a little bit so you can see. So all this table is doing is it takes our gross income, so we'll do 100000 And I've left in the standard deduction. Oops. Okay. And um, this is our taxable income now. And we pay a 24% marginal tax rate 
on the highest portion of our income, which only ends up being 258, because essentially 87,450 minus 86,375, you take 24% of that amount. Then you pay the full 22% on all the taxable income left over in this range, 12% on all the taxable income left over in this range, and 10% in all the le leftover taxable income in this range. Now, this has already worked it all out for you. These are your total percentages, your the marginal rage, rates of those of those ranges. Now, altogether, look at this. Altogether, you pay fifteen thousand dollars in taxes with these assumptions. But if you take that fifteen thousand dollars and you divide it by your taxable income, that's called your effective tax rate. You're really only paying seventeen percent of the taxable income. So it's not accurate to say that mar the marginal rate is kind of misleading in a sense. The marginal rate is always higher than your effective tax rate because it's the percentage on the highest portion of your taxable income. The rest of your taxable income will be averaged out with these lower percents and its effective tax rate tries to take all that into account and it will therefore always be lower because it includes the highest rate plus all the lowest rates put together. Now for effective tax rates, to save you the headache that it caused me, uh, so here we might say our effective tax rate is about 17%, but what is that really saying? And is there agreement about what effective tax rate really is? The short answer is no. So effective tax rates. Whenever you're talking about an effective tax rate, you should always ask, how did you figure it out? Because there are two working assumptions, and I'm sure there are many more in accounting. Uh, depends on the business you're working in. Is it personal finance? There are lots of ex um, things to think about. But basically, there are two definitions that you'll see if you look this up right now. The first one is to take your taxes and divide it by your gross income. So that first definition, if you go back to our table, it would be different. It would be 15000 divided by the gross income, 100000 And 15000 out of 100000 is about 15%. Now, that's different. We got 17% because we're using here the other definition, which is taxes divided by adjusted gross income. Now... It's really, you know, this is a percentage. This is out of the uh, taxable income. This percentage is meant to inform you about how much you're paying in taxes. So you can decide, really, which definition you want to use. And this is a personal finance class, so if I ask you a question about it, I will tell you which one we're referring to. But it's not so much that one is right or wrong. It's just really about uh, how you want to look at it. If you like thinking of your taxes out of all the money you have, then go for your gross income. I like looking at the taxable income because if I have deductions, if I have money invested in my retirement or health savings account, I know I'm not getting taxed on that. I want to know out of the money left over, what am I paying in taxes? What percentage of that taxable income is actually being paid out? So that's a definition I prefer, but there's not really agreement to my surprise. And maybe it's kind of a relief because it reminds you that you should really be asking this for yourself. Which equation do you want to use and why? That's the real question. All right, I hope this helps.